Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer. I'm super excited to let you know that today is the first day of Dye December, which is a month-long celebration of die cutting over at Simon Says Stamp. Now, I prefer die cutting over anything else in the card making process, so I'm excited about this. Now, there are a bunch of new products today from Simon. However, I'm really focusing on the technique that I feel gives the most from die cutting, and that is partial die cutting. I've done many videos on this technique in the past, but this video pulls them all together and I show a bunch of different ways to get really cool new looks from your dies, lots of different types of dies, using partial die cutting. So this video has so many partial die cutting technique ideas that I'm focusing just on that. And my next video, that will be up tomorrow, will show the completed cards and the really cool inking technique I used on them. This inking technique is very quick and it results in two cards at once. So be sure to come back tomorrow. Today is all about the partial die cutting. However, if you want to see the completed cards closer and the supplies used, I do have that all up on my blog now. I really hope you'll give this technique a try. It's something that allows you to stretch the life of your supplies big time. Okay, let's get started. We'll start with this example here. Now I will be demonstrating my partial die cutting techniques using my Gemini today. I've demonstrated it with a Spellbinder Platinum many times in past videos. I'll link to one up here on the top right. I thought I would show how to do this with a Gemini as I get a lot of questions about this process with other machines. Keep in mind you can do this with whatever machine you may have. Let's get started with this die. It's new from Simon Says Stamp and it's called the Kaleidoscope Medallion. Let's do partial die cutting so there's a solid area to stamp a sentiment right down the middle. I'm taking a piece of temporary tape. This is called Easy C Tape, but any washi tape would work. And putting it along the back of the die right across the middle, trying to center it a bit. I will then put that on a piece of white cardstock. You could use whatever paper you want. Now it's time to do partial die cutting and I'm using that tape as a guide. I'm lining up the top edge of the blue tape with the edge of my cutting plate. See how that's lined up there? When I have it lined up, I'll put a piece of tape on the cutting plate to make sure it doesn't shift. Then I'll take the other cutting plate and put that on top, making sure the edges are flush there. So anything sticking out will not cut, anything between the plates will. Now I'll feed this through my die cut machine I've never had any problems doing this with my die cut machine, but I do believe it's against the rules, so just keep that in mind. I've done this with this machine and with my Spellbinders for years and never have had problems. Okay, so now you can see part of that cut. So now I've rotated my paper, lining up the other edge of the blue tape with the edge of the cutting plates, putting the other cutting plate on top, lining it all up with the edge of that blue tape, and running this other side through the die cut machine. So what's happened is the top and the bottom have die cut, but that center section that never got between the plates, we had the tape there, that stays solid. So now you can do a sentiment there. The last step to create this piece is to cut with a straight edge. I'm just using a metal ruler here along with a craft knife. I line up the edge of the metal ruler with where the die cutting stopped on one side. And I'm cutting in between the die cut shape to cut away those extra pieces in a straight line. Now this is actually pretty easy to do with a craft knife. I'm not great with a craft knife, but I have no problem doing this. It's just little pieces. And now I can pop those out and notice how it's a straight, nice cut line along that side. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now this is something that just takes a couple minutes to do, not long at all, but it gives a completely different look to this die. This is actually a much easier process if you have a more solid or large die or die with thicker lines. This is pretty intricate. But this one shows you that even with an intricate small die, you can do this technique. I have done a video with more large dies that aren't as intricate, and you can check that up here in the top right if you want to see that in action too. So I just cut off the rest of the edges, and now we have this beautiful die cut with that solid area in the center where we can add a stamp sentiment. If you find any edges are a little rough, just use a sanding block, that's that white block, to just kind of smooth out the edges. And usually you'll have no problem at all and you get a nice, great result. It looks like the die cut this piece. 
Now in my video tomorrow, I'll show you how I created this. I'll show you how I colored that piece and everything else to it. But I wanted to show you what this looks like on a final card. It's such a fun look to have a smooth die cut like that when your die looks completely different. Okay, let's do another example using this type of technique. This time I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Majestic Medallion die. This is a really cool one to create repeating patterns on a background. Once again, I'm putting a piece of tape right along the center. You could use a wider piece of tape or a thinner piece, it doesn't matter at all. I'm lining one edge of the blue tape along with the edges of my cutting plates, then running it through my die cut machine. When I'm done, I'll rotate it and run the other side through the die cut machine. So the area under the blue tape never actually goes through the machine, so it stays solid. So think about it, maybe you have a simple large heart die. You could do this technique to end up with a solid strip that extends across the card, but is one piece with that large heart. Any die shape would work here. Now I'm using my straight edge to line up with where the cutting stops on one side and use my craft knife to cut away the extra pieces between the thin die cut. Again, this is a pretty intricate die, as intricate as they come. So if it's possible to do a cool partial die cut technique with this, you could definitely do it with more solid images. Once I've cut along both sides, I'm just trimming the edge of the die cut to form that shape so that the sentiment strip is kind of contained within the shape. And look at the different look that we created so that the sentiment can be stamped right on there. Now let's do this with a different shape die, this time the stylized butterfly from Simon Says Stamp. This shows that a lot of different shapes work, even when intricate. So I put a piece of tape across the back center. I'm lining up the edge of the tape with the edge of the cutting plate. I'll put the other cutting plate lined up too and run that through. Then I'll rotate it and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm showing a lot of smaller elements with this technique, but later I'll show you how to do backgrounds with this technique. Now I feel like the width of this blue Easy C tape is just about right for a stamp sentiment, but you could use a wider tape or a thinner tape. It's totally up to you. You could do pencil lines if you preferred so you can get it exact. But the Easy C tape is a nice, nice width and makes it super easy. So once again, I'm using the T-Roller to line up with where the die cutting stops along one side, and I'll cut away all the extra material. So the extra around the outside, like you see me doing here, and then the extra pieces in between the die cut lines. Now, I do recommend having a good craft knife. My craft knife is really old. I need to get a new one. It would be helpful if I had that, so I'll definitely be ordering one in the future. So there, look at that. You have a long sentiment strip across your butterfly, which is very different than what the die itself is meant to cut. And here is one more that I did off screen. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Triangle Burst Medallion. On the left is what the die looks like, but on the right is what I came up with with partial die cutting. I have a couple more examples with this style die before we move on to others. And with this one, I wanted to show you a little trick. Here's what I did with partial die cutting. But I wanted to mention this because I was doing it as I was creating. If you ever have a die cut that has little fuzzies or little hairs hanging off the edge, all you have to do is flip it over and use your sanding block on the back side. That'll knock off all those little hairies that sometimes stick off of die cuts. And it cleans them up beautifully. I just like to do that on the back side. Just a little tip for you. Okay, now with this one, I wanted to cut the edge of the sentiment strip off so it'd be rounded and be kind of contained in the shape. So I cut a regular die cut shape and glued it to the back. I like to put something heavy on it while it dries. Once it's dry, I'm just rounding off the extra that's sticking off the sides, that little sentiment strip that we built in. And now that strip is kind of contained. So I flip it over and look at that. Super smooth on the front. And it looks like that's what the die was intended to cut. I really like dies like this because there are many different looks you can get from them. Here's another one. This is the refracted medallion. The reason I like them is you can do techniques like partial die cutting, but you can also do inlay. So imagine taking this die cut and putting in different colors into the little openings or doing a repeated background. You can make an impression with this die too. You can never go wrong with geometric dies like this. 
I feel like considering things like that, how many different ways you can use a dye is very important before you purchase one so that you can make sure you get value from it. So here is another example. Look how that sentiment strip looks like it's kind of built into the shape. Such a fun way to change it up. Now this next die is beautiful. It's called the Etched Medallion and it's a solid, almost solid die with lots of etching details. And I wanted to show you this works really well for partial die cutting. In fact, it's easier. I'm doing the same thing where I have a piece of tape along the back and I'm cutting one side partially and then the other side partially, just like before. And I end up with that solid area in the middle. And look with this, it's super easy. I didn't have to use my craft knife and look at that beautiful finished edge you get. So try this with whatever dies you have. The more solid, definitely the easier to use. Okay, let's move on to different types of dies. This one's a little bit bigger and it's a snowflake die, but I'm demonstrating how to use it for partial die cutting in my favorite way, which is along a border. So over on the left, I have the Simons' Stamp Detail Tapestry. We're gonna use that on the background. It just does a beautiful piercing. On the right, we have the Dancing Snowflake die, which we'll do the partial die cutting with. In fact, we'll do partial die cutting with both dies on the same piece. First, let's take the Snowflake die, and I'm putting it right across the top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock. And I'm putting tape kind of at the angle that I want this to be cut at the top of my card. I then am taking the tape and lining up the tape with the edge of the die cutting plates. I'll put the other die cutting plate on top, lining it up too, and running it through my die cut machine. When it comes out, you'll see that the top edge is cut to the snowflake, and it's at that angle because that's how I put it through my plates. Now I take my straight edge and I line it up with where the die cutting stopped on the snowflakes and cut between the die cut. So I cut between the lines of the snowflake. I just like to press lightly and go back and forth a few times over an area to cut all the way through. But again, it'd be easier if I had a sharper craft knife. Now I can pop out all those pieces and look at this. I think that looks amazing. It looks like you have a background die to cut that. Next, I want to use the piercing die, but only below the snowflakes, only for that solid bottom portion. So I'm taping the die onto the front of our die cut, just lining it up. We'll do partial die cutting again, this time so that the solid area is only between the cutting plates and the snowflakes are hanging out. That way, the solid area will get the pierce pattern, but the snowflakes will stay solid. Now I'll run that through my die cut machine and check that out. It has beautiful detail on the bottom and the snowflakes sticking off on the top. There's just something nice about that continuous piece. You could definitely just die cut the snowflake piece and the solid piece and glue them together. But having it solid and continuous looks really cool in real life. And by the way, that colorful background there, I just love it. That I will de demonstrate the technique I used for that in my next video, so stay tuned for that. It's really easy and a great way to create multiple cards at once. Next, I wanted to show how you can use partial die cutting to make a die appear bigger. In this case, it's a mirror image. So here I have the Simon Says Stamp Delicate Branch Die. It's a beautiful detailed die. Again, if I can do this technique with this detailed of a die, you can definitely do it with many others. I just have a piece of cardstock here where I drew a pencil line down the center. I'm taking the die and lining it up towards the top above that pencil line, but overlapping with the line too. I'm then taking a piece of tape and lining up the bottom edge of the tape with the pencil line. This time I'm leaving the area in the center a bit wider, taller. I'm once again lining up the edge of the blue tape with the edge of my cutting plates, have those lined up and then run them through the die cut machine. And there you can see where the top die cut, but the bottom stayed solid. Now I'm rotating my cardstock and again, leaving the tape where it is on the die, lining up the bottom edge of the tape with the pencil line, but this time on the other side. I'll run this through with the top edge of the tape lined up with the edges of our cutting plates. Run that through our die cut machine. And now I can do the cutting right along where the die cutting stopped on both sides. So in this case, we have like this leaf look at the top, the leaf look at the bottom and a large solid area in the middle. And it's almost like a mirror image of the two above the top and the bottom. 
So I took one smaller die and made it cover the entire front of a card because this white cardstock piece that I have is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So this is a great way to make a smaller die look bigger. And it also gives a really cool look for the front of your card. So I'm just gonna erase that pencil line, use my uh, paper sander to smooth out any rough edges from my doll craft knife, and check out this cool piece that we can put at the center of our card. We can put this on any fun inky background and it'll stand out beautifully. And if you just glued this onto a card, there wouldn't be much bulk to it. Okay, let's do another example, same idea. This time I'm using this beautiful Simon Says Stamp fine textured leaf die set. There are actually two dies in the set, but I'll use the larger. This time I'm starting with the mini slimline piece of cardstock. So this is about three and a half by six and a quarter inches. And I'm drawing a pencil line right across the center. I once again will put the leaf die towards the top, making sure I overlap with that pencil line. Because I'm overlapping there, I can be sure that it'll connect to that solid piece in the middle. I'm taking my tape and lining it up so the bottom of the tape is straight across that pencil line. And we'll do the partial die cutting technique once again. So leaving your die and cardstock hanging out from your cutting plates like I'm showing here is one way to do partial die cutting. The other way is to have the die lay across the bottom cutting plate, but only have the top cutting plate over the area you want to cut, which I've demonstrated in other videos, often with my Spellbinders Platinum, and I'll link to a video showing that up here on the top right. So if you want a different way to do partial die cutting, you can check that out. Now this time there's a lot of solid area around our die cut. So instead of using a craft knife, I'm using this Fiskars trimmer. This particular trimmer like allows you to line up with the bar and pick up and drop the blade anywhere you want. So it's easy to get into those nooks and crannies. So that's another way to do this if you're not great with a craft knife. Here you can see I also was able to just cut this middle area away with scissors. So if you have this Fiskars trimmer, it's great for partial die cutting. So I cut along the one side, and now I'll cut along the other. I'm just lining up the left edge of that bar with where the die cutting of that leaf part stops. And then I just cut away the excess. If you have a few rough edges, another thing you can do is just use a bone folder to rub across the edges where you cut, and it smooths it out, giving it a really nice continuous one die cut look. All right, let's do another type of example. This time I have a larger die, once again intricate, and I'm putting a large sentiment strip kind of off center on it. So I'm putting the die in the bottom corner of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock. And I'm actually putting two pieces of tape right where I want my sentiment strip to be because I want this to be a thicker or wider sentiment strip area. So you can see it's bigger than just one tape thick. I'm using my partial die cutting to cut above the tape. Then I will flip it over and use my partial die cutting to cut below the tape. So anything under the tape will always have been hanging out from the cutting plates and won't cut. So there we have our partial die cut look. You could leave this as is and just stamp in that solid area, but I think it's fun to cut away that extra bit. I again am using my Fiskars paper trimmer I can just line up the edge of that silver bar with where the die cutting stopped and just drop the blade and cut right up to the die cutting. For those little nooks and crannies between the leaves, I did find it easier to use a craft knife and straight edge. So use whatever method works best for you. Here is that die cut used on a card, which I'll show you in my next video once again. And check out the background. I have a secret technique that makes a background sparkly. You'll definitely have to try it out. Okay, next example shows how to do this with a really solid large die. So this is the Stitching Sunflower die from Simon Says Stamp, it's new. There's the solid sunflower, and then the other die just does a piercing pattern. So you can use those together or separate. First, I'm going to do partial die cutting with just the solid sunflower first. So I drew a pencil line right down the center of my cardstock piece. And I'm just putting a piece of tape towards the top, and then I'll put a piece of tape towards the bottom. And I'm just following the edges of the die cuts to try to get these straight. This time I'm leaving a larger area in the middle where we won't do any die cutting. So I have the edge of my cutting plate where I'm lining up the bottom of the top blue tape. And I'll run that through, making sure the edges of both cutting plates line up with that blue tape. Run that through. 
then rotate it and do the same thing with the other side. So there's a large area in the middle there that doesn't cut. I'm just using a pencil here to draw against the edges of my tape so I can remove the tape, but yet know where to cut it later. I really didn't need to do that, but it can be helpful. So now we have this shape that doesn't really show much because not much has die cut yet, but stick with me. When we add the piercing, it'll really pop. Next, we just need to cut what's hanging off of the partial die cutting. So I'm using a straight edge right up against where the partial die cutting stopped on both sides and cutting along it. I could have used my trimmer for this if I wanted to. You can see how easy this is to cut because it's a pretty solid shape, not much intricate to it. So now we have the shape where you really can't see the sunflower. So on now I'm taking the piercing die that comes with this die set and lining it up in the center. Normally you use a piercing die just as you do a regular die, but I wanna make an impression with those dots so they really stand out. So instead I'm using the embossing mat that comes with the Spellbinder Platinum and with other machines. And I'm using this to make an impression. So instead of really cutting those little pierced holes, this will make a, like an impression which will give the look of more dimension. And check this out, I love that look. So with the partial die cutting, we gave it a little more interest. And with the piercing die, we add all that detail. Just another fun way to use your die sets. Next, let's look at a couple ways you can change the look of background dies a lot by using partial die cutting. In this case, I'm using the beautiful new Simon Says Stamp detailed pin cushion plate that's over there on the left. It's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch background die, but I wanted to use it on a five by seven background, which is much bigger. So I have a five by seven piece of white cardstock here, and I'm using this plate on the top and on the bottom to give me a five by seven background. So I'm just overlapping the top of this with the background die, and I'm drawing little pencil lines at the top of my paper right on the die. Those you can easily erase. And I'll tape the paper right in the spot. That way I can be sure to do the same on the other side too. So we're doing partial die cutting in a little bit of a different way here. Now I'll run this through my die cut machine. This time I am just making sure that the bottom edge of the die down there in the bottom, hangs out a little bit from the cutting plates. See it's, hang it's hanging out just a tiny bit there? The reason I'm doing that is that cutting edge cuts. The edge of that cutting plate cuts, and we don't want to cut our five by seven background down. So I just have it hanging out a little bit from those cutting plates. And when I run it through, I end up with that pattern, but it doesn't cut it off because of partial die cutting. So now we have that fun pattern on one side. Next, I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I will take the other side and line it up with those pencil lines that we did on the die and tape that in place and do the same process where we allow the edge of that die to hang out just a little bit from the cutting plates, preventing it from cutting our background in half. So here you can see how the bottom of the die is hanging out a little bit past the cutting plate. Put the other one lining up with the other cutting plate, run that through, and now we have that pattern on the top and the bottom. So this is a five by seven background where we have the pattern on the top and the bottom and a solid area in the middle where we could do stamping. I think that's a great way to extend the life of your dies to bigger size cards. Now let's do that again with this example. Here we have an intricate snowflake background die, but I added a solid area in the middle and made it bigger. This snowflake background has a lot of detail to it. For this, I'm using the Honey Bee Fancy Flake dies. Now these dies you can buy together or separate. There is one that cuts a solid outline of snowflakes and one that just does a piercing in the same pattern. So you can use these together or separate. The one on the left just does piercing. So you can see how they line up nicely. Let's first do partial die cutting with the die, the one without the piercing. I decided I wanted to do a mini slimline background, which is six and a quarter inches tall bigger than our die. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is six and a quarter inches tall and a bit wider than we need. It's about five inches wide. So again, this piece of cardstock is taller than our die. I'm just doing pencil lines about the area I want to be solid and I want this sentiment to fit on it. That's why you see the stamp there. So I'm drawing a pen little pencil line where I want the bottom of the sentiment area to go. Then I put my sentiment above it and do a pencil line right above where I want my sentiment to go. I'm measuring this out because I have a particular sentiment in mind for this particular card. 
So I have a pencil line above and below. Anything between that, I want to stay solid. So let's do some partial die cutting with this background. I am lining up one edge of the die with the top edge of my cardstock. So you can see that top area is lined up with the top of the cardstock. Now I'm lining up the top pencil line that I drew, see those pencil lines over there, with the edge of my cutting plate. Just that area on the top will cut, not the bottom because it's hanging out. So I line up my cutting plates and run that through also. So this is just going to cut that one area. Now we'll complete the same process again, but with the bottom portion. But we want to make sure it lines up. It's very easy to do though. So now I will take that die, line up the edge with the other edge of the cardstock. So the edge of the die is getting lined up with the other edge of the cardstock. And I'm just making sure the sides of my die line up with the sides that are already cut there right at the bottom. So that just lines up very easy. This time I'm lining up the edge of the cutting plates with the other pencil line there. So you can see the pencil line sticking out there. Put the other cutting plate on top and run that through. So in the first pass, we cut the top portion of our background. In the second pass, we cut the bottom portion of the background. And now this piece is six and a quarter inches tall and it's four and a quarter inches wide, which is bigger than we need. But look at that. Now I can do the craft knife so that I can cut out those extra pieces, just lining up the edge of the metal straight edge with where the die cutting stopped on one side. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. If using a craft knife and straight edge scares you, don't be scared. I promise it's not hard because we're not cutting large areas. It's really easy to do and very forgiving. After all, if you mess up in a spot, you can always put an embellishment over it. I've been known to do that a time or two. So now we have this new solid die cut that has room for sentiment and it's taller than the die intended, which covers a bigger card. You could even do this for a full slimline card if you wanted to. We'll just cut the edges off when we add it onto a mini slimline. But I do end up changing my mind and I don't cut the edges off. You'll see that in the next video. Next, I wanted to add the piercing detail to this using the other die. Remember how there's another one? So I'm just lining it up with the die cut we have and again doing partial die cutting so I don't get the pierce pattern in that solid area where I intend to stamp. So I'm just running the top part of the die through with the piercing and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing with the other edge. This piercing detail is beautiful in real life. It's hard to see in a video because this is on white cardstock, but it really does add a lot of detail. If you've never tried any type of piercing die or piercing background die, I encourage you to check them out. And in my next video, I'm going to show you a really cool way to use piercing dies in a new way to get more uses from it. Okay, so now we have this fun background and I in the next video will show you how I turned it into a card. But before we go, I wanted to show you how I created these snowflakes because I think it's really cool and super easy. This is using an embossing and cutting combo. This is becoming more popular in crafting and I'm excited to use one here. This is the filigree snowflake emboss and cut. This embossing folder does the impression and it cuts at the same time. I thought I would demonstrate with some silver cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. You can use any cardstock you want. You just put your paper in like you do with a regular embossing folder and run it through your die cut machine however you normally would. With this particular embossing folder, I use my Spellbinders Platinum. I just have the platform, a cardstock shim, and then the embossing folder. And I like to run it back and forth a little bit like you see me do here. You don't really have to. I just sometimes feel it kind of gives a little extra attention. And then when you take it out, look at the embossing on the silver cardstock. So it embosses it and cuts it out at the same time. I love seeing more and more companies do these. Beautiful detail and super quick to do. It's gorgeous on regular cardstock too. So I'll be using that on my card. You'll see in the next video where I show you how to do all these inky backgrounds. But before we go, I have one more example, one more that I did kind of as an afterthought, and I thought it turned out well. I wanted to show you that partial die cutting works with window style dies too. Here I have the Simonses Stamp Birthday Candles die. It cuts that window, and I did partial die cutting so there would be that solid strip there where I could stamp happy birthday across it. This would be great for a really smooth card if you just did little die cut pieces and color into the little openings be great for a non-bulky card. 
So I hope this video demonstrates that partial die cutting can give all different types of dies new looks. Also check out my other big partial die cutting video. I'll link to it at the end here. It shows much more and has even more examples, mostly with bigger background dies. And be sure to come back for my video tomorrow where I show you a really cool way to make multiple backgrounds and colorful die cuts at once. It's a fun inking technique. If you're interested in the supplies I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description. And I am so thankful for the time that you spend with me. I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll see you again tomorrow.